Today's New Testament reading is from the Epistle to the Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 17 through 27. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise as to what is good, and innocent as to what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my kinsmen. I, Tertius, who wrote this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Quartus greet you. Now, to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory for evermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor James Yonkers. Well, dear friends in Christ, our text today has three parts. That would be too long for this short presentation, so I've chosen to focus on one. The center part, with specifically with the verse Romans 16, 19. And as I remember it from a song during my camp counselor days with Enloma, be excellent at what is good, be innocent of evil, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan. Yes, God will crush him underneath your feet. This brings up many questions. How is it that we can be excellent at what is good? After all, are we not by nature sinful and unclean? Are we by nature an enemy of God? An enemy to good? And how can anyone do good? After all, didn't Jesus himself say, No one is good except the Father who sent me? Dear friends, it is precisely this which Paul seeks us to bring to mind as he remembers his baptism and teaches us to remember ours. To remember how we in baptism were joined to Christ, joined to his death, and most assuredly to his resurrection as well. But with us, as we are joined there, so too all our works are. When we do a good work, it is tainted by our sin. It is sinful because it comes from our sinful hearts. So it too, like us, must run to the cross or be dragged there kicking and screaming and must be renewed, washed in the blood of the Lamb, purified, made holy by Christ Jesus. Be excellent at what is good. And how are we to be innocent of evil? After all, evil is our nature. But we seek to be innocent of it and we do so once again, through the work of Christ Jesus, once again, by coming to that cross, just as our works go there, first we go there too. And we are dragged there, kicking and screaming by our Lord. Our old Adam should daily be drowned and die, and a new Adam rising up within us. And this new Adam, the Adam from our baptism, which can do these good works. The new Adam inside of us, which can be innocent of evil. To be excellent at what is good and innocent of evil is to be none other than baptized and to recall our baptism. We do good works. Here in this small congregation of about 40 people, we do a lot of good works. We serve our community. We feed the hungry. We help the cold. We are the hands, the feet of the Lord. 
And yet even these good works must go, like all good works, to the cross, where they are cleansed in the blood of the Lamb, refreshed, renewed, restored, made pure and holy. It is in this way that we are excellent at what is good and innocent of evil. Through our baptism, we are made to be children of God. We are made into a creation pure and holy in the sight of God clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Paul teaches this to Romans, a congregation he's never met, a congregation he looks forward to meeting. He meets them in this letter, addressing all these issues so he can teach them. And he finds this important lesson, to teach them how to be excellent in what is good, to teach them how to be innocent of evil, to teach them the meaning of baptism. And so we are baptized into Christ so that we can be excellent at good and innocent of evil. And the promise given in the garden is given to them again in Romans and given to us that the God of peace will soon crush Satan. That God will crush him underneath our feet and that we can then live eternally as the children of God. This is the promise of Romans that Paul gives to the people through Christ Jesus our Lord at the closing of his letter. And we thank God that he gives us all we need so that we can be called good, so that we, his children, may be declared righteous in his sight and that our works may be declared good and worthy works, not on account of ourselves, not on account of what we do or leave undone, but on account of the blood of Christ Jesus, his blood, his righteousness, being infused into us, being infused into all our good works. And for this we say thanks be to God. Amen.